All right, everyone, thanks for joining. And before we begin, we're going to get started with some pre work. We're going to simulate some devices in NI Max. NI Max is part of NI software that comes installed with a lot of our other software that allows you to view all of our software and devices that you have connected to your system. Uh, I'm going to start here with part A, and throughout the video, I'm going to be doing, or the video series, I'm going to be doing my best to follow along the guide. So that way you're able to follow along or pause um, and reference that as well. So uh, we're going to start with part A, which is just the introduction to NI Max. So if you haven't opened NI Max, you can do so with your start menu um, and just search NI Max, and you'll find that right there. Now, since we already have it open, let's go ahead and look at devices and interfaces. This is where we can see the hardware that we have connected to our system. Here, I had a compact DAC system connected earlier, so I can see that that's been connected. Uh, here is also where we're going to be able to simulate our devices, uh, but we'll do so in a moment. Now, we can also check on the software and see all the software that we have installed on the system. So I have Diadem, FlexLogger, uh, LabVIEW, and a whole lot more. And that is the basic overview of NIMAX. Now let's move to part B, where we'll be creating a simulated device. So I want you to right click on devices and interfaces and click create new. Next, we'll be going to click on simulated NI DACMX device or modular instrument and then click on finish. Now this will pop up a new window that says create simulated NI DACMX device. For this, we're going to be simulating a compact DAC chassis, which is, um, you know, just a compact DAC chassis. So let's go ahead and click on, sorry, scroll down and click uh, NIC DAC 9178. This is an eight slot compact DAC chassis. Uh, this is a good uh, module or chassis because since it's eight slots, we can have a number of different measurement types. Uh, many times people are doing mixed measurements. So this is a great uh, chassis to choose. Next, per step four, we're going to go ahead and click on configure simulated compact DAC chassis. And then we can add in all the modules into the slots. So for this, we're going to be adding in six different modules. So let's go ahead and start by adding them in. You can just type in NI uh, 9215, NI 9211, sorry. So we're going to add an NI 9211, an NI 9237 and NI 9263, and NI 9472, and NI 9234, and an NI 9215. So now we've added in these six modules. They all have different functions, and we'll have, um, and I'll be talking about that now more in a minute. Sorry, I just don't want to get ahead of myself as we start talking about this. So now we have all of these modules in our system. It might not necessarily be super helpful for us to have them named mod 1, mod 2, mod 3, mod 4, mod 5, mod 6. We don't necessarily know what they do or what the function of it is. And we don't, if this was physically here, we wouldn't want to have to check which module is in each place. So we're allowed to rename it to uh, a more descriptive name that might be easier for us to recognize. So click on the module that you want to rename and then right click and click rename. We're going to be renaming the first module to temperature. And then you can just hit enter to complete that. The second module will be renamed strain. The 9263 will be renamed as voltage out. Module four will be digital out. Module 
the next one will be sound and vibration. And the last module will be voltage in. So now we've added all of uh, our devices, all of our simulated devices to our system, which is really great. Uh, one thing that you can do is run a test panel, and that will just show you simulated uh, uh, simulated signals. So if we go ahead and hit test panel, and hit start, we'll start to see uh, simulated data. Um, I didn't mention this before, but the only difference between simulated hardware and physical hardware is the data that will produce. You know, physical hardware will produce actual data that you're collecting, whereas a simulated device will generate a simulated sine wave uh, as part of a representative set of data. When you're programming, though, uh, this is really helpful because you're able to set up your program completely. All you have to do is then switch out the input from a simulated device to a physical device and the programming and development that you'd be doing is exactly the same so this is great for when you don't necessarily have the hardware with you or just want to troubleshoot some of your code so that concludes part a b and c um, if you look at part C, I show you a little bit more on what this, on what the end result of our exercises looks like with actual physical hardware versus just simulated hardware. Um, so that's really great to get a view and understanding, but we'll be showing you some of the basics of LabVIEW in the next video. So uh, see you there.